China's Misery Index, How to Stay Strong and Survive. College Entrance Exam Protests, Shangxi Students March on Exam Day. Former CCTV anchor allegedly ousted for rejecting unwritten rules. Mainland bank employee buys multi-million villa, reported by former daughter-in-law. Li Chang's meeting signals grim prospects for China's real estate. It's all covered in today's China Truths. China's Misery Index, How to Stay Strong and Survive During the COVID-19 pandemic, the CCP implemented an extreme zero-COVID policy. The result was not the elimination of the virus but the emptying of people's pockets and hopes. With the employment situation becoming more severe day by day, from the first-tier cities like Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, and Shenzhen to the smaller towns of third, fourth, and fifth tiers, there are massive numbers of unemployed. The middle class is falling into poverty, and the lower classes are even worse off. The entire Chinese society is permeated with sadness and a sense of despair, making life unbearable for many. There is a widely circulated 2024 Misery Index online, which shows that being unemployed is not the worst situation. Nine times worse than unemployment is unemployment plus no savings plus mortgage plus raising children plus debt plus debt collection plus illness plus parents' illness plus house foreclosure, and there are not a few in this situation. Across the country, local CCP governments are inventing ways to squeeze the populace. Some have ordered increases in water and electricity charges, others have raised gas fees, some have increased fuel costs, and others have raised transportation fees, including basic living necessities like food, which are also seeing price hikes. Those with loans cannot delay their repayments even for a minute, even if their homes are foreclosed, they must continue to pay. The unbearable pressure, with no future in sight, the severe lack of material goods, have led to complete despair in spirit and a loss of confidence in life, hence they resort to desperate measures. While it may seem that these are caused by economic reasons, a little thought reveals that it's only the surface, the CCP's political system is the reason for the people's misery and lovelessness. It's the CCP's political system that has ruined the Chinese economy. The financial health of China's state-owned banks is deteriorating, with only the Postal Savings Bank maintaining a net interest margin above the critical 1.8% threshold. Other major banks like the Industrial and Commercial Bank and the Bank of Communications are witnessing significant declines in their margins, the latter potentially falling below 1% by year-end. Financial analysts predict that by next year, all six major banks could be facing losses, signaling severe troubles for the CCP's financial system. In response, on the News Insight program, analyst Li Muyun advises citizens to withdraw their money from banks and, if possible, convert it into foreign currency for safety. He recommends frugality, postponing non-essential purchases, and saving rigorously during these challenging times. Lee stresses the importance of maintaining employment despite low wages, as the job market tightens due to widespread business closures. He views China's current economic struggles as possibly the beginning of a prolonged crisis and urges resilience and perseverance, suggesting that enduring these hardships could be a transformative phase, leading up to the CCP's eventual decline. Additionally, there's another matter, it's advised to proceed cautiously with plans to travel to the U.S. due to a new executive order signed by President Biden. This order, effective from May 5, suspends the processing of asylum applications if illegal crossings at the U.S.-Mexico border exceed 2,500 people per day. Consequently, individuals en route to the U.S. may need to reconsider their plans and explore alternative options or methods. For those already in the U.S., it is crucial to value this opportunity, adhere to the laws, learn the language, and understand cultural differences to integrate successfully. Also, find a job, work hard and steadily at your job. In this American society, as long as you are willing to work hard, anyone can live happily. College Entrance Exam Protests, Shangxi Students March on Exam Day According to X-Platform Today's Questioning Network News, on June 7, students from the Oral Hygiene School in Yunchang City, 
Shaanxi Province took to the streets to protest because the school sent students to Hunan to take the college entrance examination. As a result, they could not take the exam without admission permits. On that day, the students took to the streets to demand justice. Videos show a large group of students marching on the streets with banners, attracting a large crowd of onlookers. The banners read, Yunqing Private Oral Hygiene School, Give Back My College Entrance Examination Qualification, while they chanted slogans, I want to study, I want to take the college entrance exam, give back my youth. There was a subtitle that said, Yunqing Oral Hygiene School sent children to Hunan to take the college entrance examination, but they didn't have admission tickets. Now they are sending the children back. Three years of children's youth is gone. This school is a liar. In response, ex-user LQ explained, mainland technical and vocational students can participate in the regular college entrance exam or even apply as social youth. But the prerequisite is having an equivalent high school diploma, i.e., a formal graduation certificate. Didn't the students realize for years that this school couldn't issue graduation certificates? According to the website of Yunchen City Oral Hygiene Vocational School, the school was established in 2000, approved by the Yunchen City Education Bureau as a full-time oral health vocational school. It offers popular majors such as dental restoration technology and elderly care management and has multiple professional laboratories including intraoral and nursing, with students from all over the country. The National Unified Examination for Admission to Ordinary Universities in China for the year 2024 took place on June 7 and 8, with 13.42 million candidates participating. However, this year, Jilin, Heilongjiang, Anhui, Jiangxi, Guangxi, Guizhou, Gansu, and seven other provinces and regions launched their first new college entrance exam. The examination subjects implemented in various places follow the 3 plus 1 plus 2 pattern, where the unified college entrance exam subjects are Chinese, mathematics and foreign language using the national paper, the first elective subject is either history or physics, and the provincial elective subjects are ideology and politics, geography, chemistry, or biology. The 2024 college entrance exam is said to be the hardest college entrance exam in history, with a 33% undergraduate admission rate, which is not the hardest aspect. The most challenging change is the shift in focus from testing knowledge to testing competencies, placing greater emphasis on critical thinking. The Chinese composition test questions on the first day of the college entrance examination spark heated discussions among netizens, with some netizens bluntly saying that the questions are unfair and the intelligent model of party spirit. Former CCTV anchor allegedly ousted for rejecting unwritten rules. In China, becoming a female TV anchor is a dream for many young girls. However, a comment from Ouyang Shadan, a former CCTV anchor who was removed from her position, I don't want to be a human in the next life has drawn significant attention from numerous Chinese netizens, sparking discussions around her statement. On June 5 last year, the topic Hai Xia and Ouyang Shadan are no longer CCTV hosts reached the top of Baidu's trending searches in mainland China. At that time, discussions included updates to the list of CCTV hosts, the names of Hai Xia, Ouyang Shadan, Gu Guining, Su Zhuyang, Zhang Xiaonan, and many other hosts were no longer on the list. Although mainland media later reported on this, they did not disclose the reason for Ouyang Shadan's disappearance. According to reports at that time, Ouyang Shadan had left the CCTV news broadcast anchor desk more than three years ago. Public information reveals that Ouyang Shidan graduated from the Beijing Broadcasting Institute in 1999, and after graduation, she joined Shanghai Television. In 2003, she transferred to CCTV to host on the Economic Channel, and from 2011, she began serving as a female anchor for CCTV's news broadcast until the end of April 2020. According to a report by Japan's Sankey Shimbun in October 2020, Ouyang Shadan might have been cooperating with a CCP government investigation due to her close relationship with former Chinese Ministry of Public Security Deputy Minister Sun Li Jun. The CCP officially announced the downfall of Sun Li Jun on April 19, 
2020, and Ouyang Shedon also suddenly disappeared from CCTV programming in late April 2020. Furthermore, in June 2023, her name was removed from the list of hosts on the CCTV website. Recently, a message from Ouyang Shedon was circulated on X platform, shocking many Chinese netizens that she does not want to be a human in the next life. Ouyang Shedon also posted in her own video, life can exist in any form as long as it is free. The relevant remarks have aroused doubts and concerns from a large number of Chinese netizens. Daniel Fong believes that Ouyang Shedon may have omitted two words at the time, that is, I do not want to be a Chinese in the next life. Netizen Wei Guangjing disclosed on Platform X that a senior CCP official tried to coerce Ouyang Shedon, but after she clearly refused, she was immediately fired by CCTV. Ouyang Shedon's subsequent statement about not wanting to be human in her next life was a reflection on this incident. She likely made this statement because Ouyang Shedon had seen through the dirtiness and shamelessness of the CCP officials, leading her to leave that environment at CCTV. On June 6, Chinese human rights lawyer Wen Du residing overseas released a new video of Ouyang Shedon encouraging Chinese students facing college entrance exams by the seaside, saying, You are not alone, each of us has gone through this, and it is also a part of youth, a valuable experience. When Du stated that he heard Ouyang Shedon had resigned voluntarily, and her TikTok account was still actively posting new videos as of the morning of the 6th, indicating she was normal and did not show signs of being forced to do something she did not want to, leading to sadness or anger. Mainland bank employee buys multi-million villa, reported by former daughter-in-law. Recently, Ms. Wen, a netizen from mainland China, released a video publicly reporting that her former father-in-law's family, who were all ordinary bank employees, had purchased a villa worth tens of millions in Wuhan and had also illegally invested in highways. On June 8, the Hubei Provincial Branch of the Agricultural Development Bank of China issued a notice stating that a video of a former daughter-in-law reporting her former father-in-law, involving an employee of the bank's subsidiary, had been circulating online. The notice identified the reported individual as Mr. Su, a retired employee of the Suezhou branch, and the reporter as Ms. Wen, Mr. Su's former daughter-in-law. The Agricultural Development Bank is currently investigating the allegations made by Ms. Wen against Mr. Su. Prior to this, Ms. Wen, who claimed to be the former daughter-in-law of the head of the Audit Department of the Agricultural Development Bank Suezhou branch, posted a video reporting her former father-in-law for possessing a huge amount of unexplained wealth. Ms. Wen stated that her father-in-law, Mr. Su, owned a villa in Wuhan worth millions. During her marriage, she discovered that her father-in-law's family had a large amount of unexplained financial income. Ms. Wen explained that in casual conversations, she inadvertently learned that her father-in-law's family was illegally involved in the Hani and Honkai highways, which continuously brought huge property to her father-in-law's family. Ms. Wen questioned whether her father-in-law was involved in illegal activities, given his position in the bank's audit department, which could potentially allow for manipulations in fund usage and loan approvals. On June 8, the topic former daughter-in-law reports father-in-law for massive unexplained wealth topped the trending searches. In response, mainland netizens have variously commented that such incidents are no longer surprising. Regardless of her reasons for reporting, as long as the allegations are true, I think she deserves a reward. The reward money should come from the confiscated illegal gains, let's see who dares to be corrupt after that. I hope this time they really root out the corrupt officials. Li Chang's meeting signals grim prospects for China's real estate. Before the CCP's third plenary session, the prospect of a revival in China's real estate sector has been a focal point of attention. According to a report by Xinhua News Agency, Premier Li Chang chaired the State Council Executive meeting on the 7th, mentioning that, we will focus on promoting the implementation of the policies and measures that have been issued, and continue to study and reserve new policies and measures to destock and stabilize the market, as well as promoting the digestion and revitalization of existing real estate and land, and emphasize that we must accelerate the construction of a new model for real estate development. 
On June 8, Hong Kong's Tsingtao Daily published a commentary titled The Long Road to Stabilizing the Property Market Requires Further Policies. The article suggests that the official announcement of the state council meeting reveals that, more than three weeks after the launch of the so-called property market stabilization measures on May 17, additional follow-up policies are still needed to continue stimulating the market. Li Chang reiterated the goals to accelerate the establishment of a new model for real estate development, indicating that the path to stabilizing the property market is still long. Amidst the ongoing slump in China's real estate, the authorities introduced three major measures. First, lowering the down payment ratio for home purchases. The down payment for a first home was adjusted to no less than 15%, and for a second home financed through commercial loans, to no less than 25%. This is the first time in over 40 years of China's commercial housing history. Second, the reduction of mortgage interest rates, including lowering the interest rates for housing provident fund loans and abolishing the lower limit for commercial housing loan rates. Third, in cities with a large inventory of commercial housing, the government can buy some of the housing at reasonable prices for use as subsidized housing. The People's Bank of China also established a 300 billion yuan, roughly $41.5 billion, relending facility for state-owned enterprises to provide subsidized housing. Independent commentator Kai Shinkuin stated on X on June 7 that the Chinese government's series of real estate rescue policies launched in May had a very clear purpose, to save the government and the banks, with no regard for the interests of home buyers. The article points out that over the past few decades, the government has relied on land finance to push up land and housing prices, making huge profits, and nearly all bank loans are related to real estate, totaling more than 240 trillion yuan, about $33.1 trillion. Loans are secured by housing, if the loans cannot be repaid, an increase in foreclosed homes will drive down housing prices and collateral values, requiring the submission of additional collateral or cash, leading many families or bankrupt businesses to close their doors. Kai Shinkuin said that, unlike other countries where indirect financing predominates, many people in China borrow through bank credit intermediaries. If there is a crisis in loan repayment, how can the financial system remain unscathed? The real estate crisis has left the entire Chinese economy in shambles and the financial system on the brink of collapse. The market is skeptical about the CCP's market rescue policies announced on May 17. Recently, the top three real estate companies in China's sales rankings, Poly Development, Bank, and China Overseas Property, which are subsidiaries of state-owned enterprises, have reported that their sales have fallen by more than 30%. Don't forget to comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. If you find the information helpful, please share this video with a friend to watch together. This will be a great source of motivation for our team to produce more and more quality and reliable videos. And also don't forget to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths. Thank you for tuning in.